On our premiere broadcast, a profile of Omen Commons and the controversial new meal program that has many students seeking alternative food options. After an unsuccessful midterm election season for the Democrats, we look to 2016 and the potential presidential candidates. We'll then take a look at the latest production put on by the CLU Theater Program and talk to their leading members. And with the 2014 volleyball season finished, we reflect on last week's loss and look ahead to next season. Glad you're joining us. I'm Sohal Farah. And I'm Katie Miller. This is CLU Insider. The Omen Commons opened this semester at Cal Lutheran and has created quite a buzz here on campus. Although the new CAF boasts a menu with variety and convenience, many students are concerned about the increased prices. Natalie D'Souza Ferreira has this story. That's right, Zahal. I'm standing in front of the new $15 million Omen Dining Commons, where students get to enjoy an all-you-can-eat menu three times a day. However, prices have increased slightly as opposed to last year. This has disappointed many returning residents and has made commuters reluctant to even try the food at Omen. Dinner here costs $16.99. If you're on a meal plan and can't make it to dinner, you lose that meal. So why would students even go to Ullman if they can get a cheaper meal elsewhere? Ullman Commons menu is stacked with a variety of options ranging from stir fry to an open deli where you're in charge of choosing what you want on your sandwich. They have a full salad bar as well as a dessert bar where you can make your own ice cream sundae. Although they have a lot of great options to choose from, many students remain concerned about the prices. In an effort to better understand student concerns, we reached out to Patricia Yancer, the general manager of Sodexo, but she declined to comment. Nicole Zorin, a sophomore here at CLU, started a petition in September to bring back last year's meal plan options. With over 300 signatures in only one week, it has gained popularity around campus. So we're doing the best that we can to restore the meal plan system because we all agree that it'll make the campus a lot better and it'll be more convenient for the students. Luckily, we have great alternatives to eating on campus. The Centrum has a renovated menu, and since this year started, I have yet to see the long lines I used to see. Also, Jamba Juice serves delicious and nutritious drinks. Starbucks is also open, and what a better way to start the day than with a cup of joe and a bacon artisan sandwich. For now, these, as well as Ullman Commons, are only options for eating on campus. Though the food at Ullman is amazing, they might consider figuring out a new strategy to bring more students back to the cafeteria. This is Natalie de Souza Ferreira coming to you from Ullman Commons at California Lutheran University. Back to you guys in the studio. Speaking of controversy, voters continue to grow more divided as we come closer to the 2016 presidential elections. While 2016 may sound far away, the race for the White House has already begun. Sean McCarthy takes a look at what the recent midterm elections mean for the presidential race. The November 4th midterm elections saw a massive reorganization of party power. Although roughly 14% of those polled in October disapproved of the Republican-held Congress, Republicans still dominated elections both in the Senate and House of Representatives. The Grand Old Party has increased their Senate presence by eight seats to gain their first majority since 2006. In the House of Representatives, there was a 12-seat shift in favor of the Republicans, despite their lackluster performance as a party in pre-election polling. This election saw the lowest turnout since 1942, with only 36.3% of voters casting their ballot. Those under the age of 29 composed only 13% of these voters. I talked with political science major Ashley Lomelin of CLU Turnout Tuesday to see why she thought these numbers were so low. I think it was really low because no one really taught the youth that um, in terms of elections are actually what's really important when it comes to policies and also because it's not marketed as much as the presidential elections. Um, there's less money put into the advertisements. The Republicans taking of Congress has substantial implications on the coming presidential race of 2016. With gridlock set to get even worse thanks to partisan members and leadership, it is very likely that not a lot of meaningful legislation will get passed through. Either way, there are already potential candidates on both sides of the aisle, led by Hillary Clinton. She was the favorite going into the 2008 election until an unknown senator from Illinois came out of nowhere to incite excitement in the youth. She brings with her plenty of experience in domestic affairs as a senator from New York, as well as international clout from her time as Secretary of State under President Obama. An outsider for the Democratic ticket is Elizabeth Warren, the senior senator from Massachusetts. Although she's repeatedly denied statements that she'll run in 2016, Many political enthusiasts are hoping for a presidential bid from this former Harvard law professor who is one of the leading figures in the progressive movement. The Republican ticket has a number of contenders as well. 
One possible candidate is Tea Party leader Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Son of the former Congressman Ron Paul, the medical doctor has reached public prominence for his ability to clash with both Democrats and Republicans, thanks to his perseverance in minimizing the role of government in citizens' everyday lives. A second potential candidate comes with a familiar last name. Jeb Bush served as governor of Florida from 1999 to 2007 and made his name as someone who wasn't contained by partisan politics. In addition to reducing taxes, he also has been credited with assisting in improvements in environmental policies as well as education system reforms. The presidential elections aren't for two more years, but you can expect to hear from these candidates very soon. For CLU Insider, I'm Sean McCarthy. Back to you. Thank you, Sean. Now let's take a look at this week's headlines. Early Thursday morning, a gunman opened fire at the Florida State University Library with three people wounded as hundreds of students huddled between bookshelves before police encountered and killed the gunman outside. The hospital said one of the injured people is in critical condition at Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare. It identified another patient as Nathan Scott, who was shot in the leg and is in good condition. The third victim, grazed by a bullet, was treated and released at the scene. The gunman identified the, by authorities was Myron May, a 2005 graduate of FSU. Missouri Governor Jay Nixon has declared a state of emergency ahead of the expected grand jury decision in the Ferguson shooting. The case involves the death of 18-year-old Michael Brown after a local police officer shot him, claiming self-defense. This reignited anger that surrounded the Trayvon Martin shooting back in 2012. Both cases have flared racial tensions across the country, and the people of Ferguson are preparing for the worst as buildings across the town board up the windows in anticipation of rioting. President Barack Obama will order immigration officers to deport felons, not families, as he wields executive power to shield 5 million undocumented immigrants in the most sweeping overhaul of the immigration system in decades. Obama will lay out changes he is making to immigration laws without the consent of Congress, which has upset many leading Republican officials. A key element of his plan is to instruct immigration authorities to prioritize expulsion action against gang members, felons, and suspected terrorists rather than law-abiding undocumented par parents of U.S. citizens. That's it for the news briefs for this week. Let's take a look at what's happening in the world of sports. Cal Lutheran's women's volleyball team faced off against Trinity in the second semifinal at the 2014 NCAA Division III Regional Finals. After a hard-fought match against Trinity, CLU came up short and was knocked out of the tournament. But what does this mean for next season? Connor Allen has the story. The Regals put together another outstanding season, which included 29 wins, 22 sweeps, and a third consecutive Skyac Tournament Championship, along with the number one seed in the West Region of the NCAA Division III Tournament. All right, we're here with Diana Rohr, the middle blogger for your Cal Lutheran Regals. And we just wanted to ask you a couple questions. Like, um, so what were you thinking in the third set going into it when you guys were down two and you knew you had to come back? Well, we just kept thinking of last year when we played them at Trinity, and we were down two sets, and then we came back and won it in five. So really trying to get that uh, energy and stuff. And then in the third game when we won, we really tried to keep that momentum, and unfortunately it just didn't work out in our favor. And so what did this season as a whole mean to you and your guys' team? It's just been an amazing season. Our coaches have been uh, like so helpful and just really positive, and our uh, captains and seniors have been so supportive and very hardworking this entire season. And we just, going into next season, really want to make them proud. From Gilbert Arena at the Cal Lutheran campus, I'm Connor Allen, back to you guys. Here on campus, our JV men's basketball team will be taking on the Vandenberg Air Force team on November 21st at 7.30 p.m. And the CLU men's varsity basketball team will also be taking on Bristol University here at home on November 22nd at 7.30 p.m. Now let's take a look at what we have for you in entertainment. The CLU Theatre Department's news production, Sir Patient Fancy, is currently underway after its first show opening last week. Brian Gregler met with the lead members of the cast, as well as the director, to talk about the new and exciting show. All right, thanks guys. I'm standing outside the Prius Brandt Forum where CLU Theatre Arts Department is preparing for their new performance of Sir Patient Fancy. I was able to sit down with a couple of the cast members and director Michael Arndt before curtain call for a brief interview. Sir Patient Fancy is the 17th century tale of unfaithful women and the men who want them. Amidst the tangled webs of lust and greed, this Bodhi play explores the seedier side of society. So there's a lot of stories going on, but um, for the most part, it's a hypochondriac who's uh, getting played for his money. Yeah, the, this play is set in uh, 1678. It was written by the first woman playwright of the period. It's filled with uh, fancy restoration costumes, 
was uh, think, uh, Louis XIV, Charles II of England. Uh, language, it's set in a theater that duplicates the theater of the period. So who are some of the characters you can expect to see? Here is Isabella, she's Sir Patient Fancy's daughter. So Charles Whitmore, he's the gentleman that is uh, in love with the lead, lead character's wife. I play Lucrezia, and she is trying to, be, she's in love with the person my mother is in love with. And they've had a lot to say about what it's been like working with each other. It's really fun. Everyone's really involved, and we all have kind of become a big family, I think, in that way. We've all been around each other for hours and hours these past months, and we all, I think we all get along. And we work with a superb director yes. and technical yes. team. Yes, Michael aren't the best. And the feelings were mutual. But uh, I have a wonderful cast. They worked really hard. They've had to do ballet training, stage combat training, wearing costumes that people in the 21st century don't wear. Corsets, the men are wearing high heels and long wigs. All of that is really challenging. This group has been working on theaters for a number of weeks to present this production. And in case you were wondering what else you can expect to see, well, we, we have a, uh, a musical uh, production coming up in the spring. We're doing a soap opera in the spring, and we have 10-minute plays directed by our capstone class in the spring. So when and where can you see Sir Patient Fancy? Well, it's in the Forum. And um, we will be having our last weekend on the 20th, 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, and the 23rd is a matinee performance at 2 o'clock. And it's free with COUID. All right, so make sure you come out this weekend and support Celia's Theater Art Department. This is Ryan Gregler from Prius Brandt Forum. Back to you guys. Fall blockbuster season kicked into high gear with both Interstellar and Big Hero 6 dominating the box office. But with this week, the release of The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1, records are expected to be shattered once again. Not in the mood for an action or sci-fi? Well, Dumb and Dumber 2 opened last week, taking the top spot at the box office. Now let's take a look at this week's feature story. For our very first club spotlight, Tete Kanaku sat in for this week's CLU's Craft Club meeting to see what they have in store for this holiday season. That's right, Katie. I'm here at the CLU Craft Club meeting where they're making holiday-themed projects. Let's take a look. Every Wednesday, students gather in Swenson 101 to work on exciting arts and crafts. Today, students were decorating pine cones and mason jars for the holidays. The Craft Club was started by co-presidents Monica Lewis and Ashley Lomelin. I started Craft Club because I love crafts and so does Ashley and we just wanted to start something for people where they can come and have fun and just make crafts. What's in the future for the Craft Club? In December, early December, we're going to have a new fundraiser. It's going to be reindeer grams and you can come by, pick up a cute one and then we'll give them out. If you enjoy art and making crafts, make sure to stop by the CLU Craft Club meetings every other Wednesday in Swenson 101. This is Tate Kanaku, back to you guys. To end our premiere broadcast, we'd like to thank you for tuning into the program. All of us at CLU Insider will work to keep you informed on what you need to know, whether it's a story on campus or around the world. You can also stay updated with us in the news we provide by following our social networks as they're listed below. We hope to see you right back here for our next broadcast after the Thanksgiving break. Have a wonderful holiday with your families. I'm Sahal Farah. And I'm Katie Miller. Thank you for joining us.